In this, the year 2024, it has been eight years since the birth of what is simultaneously the most obnoxious and the most dangerous Suicune set. It's an amazing combination because the Suicune set is so dangerous inherently that it's already going to threaten you know, most of everything. But the obnoxiousness actually works in its favor to make it even better. It gives it a little bit of a buff because it's so infuriating to play against. There are so many players who will just go into tilt mode against it immediately. And, you know, the options for dealing with the Suicune are already, you know, fairly limited. And it is famous for giving opponents zero breathing room. You know, you mess up once against it and that's it. You know, and it's a Pokemon that provokes, you know, players of lesser composure into giving it, you know, that extra turn it needs to just completely run away with the game. So, the date was June 19th, 2016, and the world changed forever. Uh, actually, I think it was more famously publicized uh, July 28th, 2016, uh, with this post by Vince2612, the originator of the set. But, you know, those who were watching uh, this game when it, you know, happened, then they might have noticed, like, whoa, what is that Suicune? That is dangerous. It didn't really take off. Uh, because people are like, oh, that's interesting, but I'm not sure it's really consistent. You know, what, what's that crazy Suicune set all about? And then once Vince made this post uh, and, you know, explained it, then people went, oh my god, that's genius. And it's very rare that a uh, set that has become a standard can be so definitively attributed to one person. Uh, and you know, even rarer that you can you know, witness the exact game or the exact moment when it happened. You know, because it's usually, oh, I've been you know, toying around with this set for a while and here it is eventually. But, you know, it's hard to point to the exact moment where it first really came into being. And here we have, you know, both of those. We have uh, Vince who came up with the Suicune and then established it as, you know, the standard. So, it's, it's funny because Suicune already has one of the most famous Pokemon sets in history, uh, named Crocoon, or Calm Mind Rest Sleep Talk, named after Chromat, the player who popularized it in Gen 3. You know, and the prefix Crow has become uh, synonymous with any Pokemon using a boosting move, one attack, and then Rest and Sleep Talk. So, uh, with Vince, with uh, Vincoon, or Vince's Suicune, then you have the exact same thing, where uh, now every Pokemon that utilizes this Suicune strategy is now Vin whatever. You know, people were using uh, Entei with the same set, and or the same style of set, and they were calling it Vintei. You know, so, yeah, what makes the Suicune so diabolical? Well, previously, Suicune had plenty of variation, but it was pretty much regarded or relegated to either running sets that were full on bulk with rest or all out offensive. And it was famously annoying with those rest sets, especially the sleep talk sets, the Crocoon. But uh, the offensive sets were also very good, but the offensive sets weren't as irritating. You know, the bulky rest ones, they were obnoxious because Suicune is so bulky and it rests and you can't KO it. And to make matters even worse, it has pressure, so you're running out of PP very quickly. And, but, but, you know, it's flawed because it's slow and uh, it can, you know, be a little passive. It doesn't threaten to run away with the game immediately. So, uh, offensive sets, on the other hand, no one was really irritated by them. I mean, they're great, don't get me wrong, and there's a reason why they became a standard in, you know, multiple generations. Uh, I came around in Gen 4, but then even backpedaled and became a standard in Gen 3. But uh, not that it hadn't, you know, been tested in Gen 3, you know, some more offensive sub-variants, but it w became a standard, really, uh, after it became popular in Gen 4. Anyway, point being, offensive Suicune were really just, you know, another offensive water type. They were not really leaning into Suicune's obnoxious qualities. You know, that insane bulk and pressure to go with it. And, you know, even in uh, Gen 5, yeah, it gets scald, and the sleep mechanics are bad, okay, so, you know, rest Suicune is more of a risk. And then in Gen 6, uh, Suicune made a comeback in OU because sleep mechanics were no longer terrible again, so it could rest. So Crocoon became, you know, an OU standard once again. But this set, this is what really, really, you know, makes it terrifying. Now, the game it was used in 
uh, the Suicune doesn't actually do very much. Uh, in fact, I don't even remember if it reveals its full set, which is probably why you know, no one really noticed. Uh, now, you might think, okay, well, if this is Rest, then I guess it makes sense for it to try and set up against uh, Megalodios spamming Thunderbolt. Uh, but the thing is that the second Thunderbolt crits, and that prevents the Suicune from doing anything. Whereas otherwise it would have been terrifying. And you see it trying to sub there. And, oh no, it does reveal his head. Okay, so I was right the first time. That people, yeah, did notice that wacky Suicune and was like, whoa, what's going on there? But, you know, seeing as it doesn't do anything, people, it's probably easier to dismiss. I'm not saying it's logical. You know, like you could see, oh, I know that Suicune set would probably be better if it didn't get crit. It might be good in general, but a lot of people aren't thinking around that. Especially because this was for the uh, first round of the World Cup of Pokemon. And there are a lot of OU games being uh, played at that time. So, you know, you're not really noticing things in as much detail, and there's so much to watch. So, yeah, um, in this game, it winds up doing nothing, sadly. But, uh, and then the rest of the game, I don't think it even does anything else. Uh, well, I mean, you do get to see a little bit of what makes it so scary. Uh, Vince brings it in beautifully off a double switch uh, as Tangro, or, yeah, uh, Lando U turns out a Tangrowth, brings in Talonflame, and then double switches to Suicune to get some nice leftovers uh, on the Heatran. And uh, seeing as the Suicune is faster, Heatran doesn't want to give it a sub. So he's going to switch out, and Suicune goes for Scald. So uh, multiple rounds of leftovers here. Obviously, that burn, that would have been absolutely nightmarish. But now with Protect, you're getting even more lefties. So uh, it's not just about uh, the setup of Calm Mind, Sub, and Protect. It's also about, you know, in, you know, I mean, in one burst. It's not like you set up and you immediately commit and go for it. No, I also uh, want to emphasize it's great because even if the Suicune has trouble, you know, has forced to switch out, has trouble getting going early, you can bring it in later and do something like what you just saw. Uh, something Rest Suicune struggles more with because obviously with Rest you get back up to full on a free turn like the one it just had, but it also is then, you know, very vulnerable for two turns. So, um, yeah, now he even pivots it into a Skarmory, or Skarmory. Uh, Tangrowth, HP Fire, so gains a little bit of lefties there, you know, 1%, but more importantly gets even more lefties there, so look at this, and note the Protect on the Giga Drain, because that is a major point we're going to be making, uh, we're going to be looking into later. So, uh, Poic makes the nice move and sleeps, and he tries to force out Tangrowth, and again, look at this, beautiful playing from Vince's side, so even if the Suicune is not doing so much in this game, uh, as, insofar as it's, you know, not sweeping the entire team, you see just how quickly it can get itself back in the game. Because consider, you know, this Suicune using Rest. You know, it's not going, it's going to be a million times easier to, you know, threaten out. But here with Protect, yes, you heal up, uh, you don't heal up as well, but you are more active as a threat. And that is what has made the Suicune so consistent. Yes, Rest Suicune, you know, takes over games, it's crazy, all that. Uh, but with this variant, then it is always a threat, pretty much, you know, and it, as long as it can create a sub, it's a threat. So here, uh, Vince is not going for the Calm Minds, even with the sub up. I'm not sure if that was the right move. He tried to go for the Scald. I mean, I think um, it was probably going to be a rough uh, time anyway. He's trying to burn. He's going for the long game, going for the burn. So, you know, that's probably the right move on Vince's end. He wound up eating a Thunderbolt. But yeah, with Keldeo's Secret Sword and Weavile's knockoff and, you know, even Tangrowth and Heatran, he's not healthy enough to pull off the Calm Mind Sweep, so... Uh, trust Vince on that one. And look, he's, you know, staying at full health. Now, I don't know about that. I guess he doesn't really have a switch in. Yeah, his team is, uh, fairly... So he has to sacrifice Sweep in there. So yeah, it doesn't really wind up doing anything else, and then I think, uh... Yeah, Weavile winds up winning. But, um... Yeah, where this really took off... You know, there was before this post, and there was after this post. It's also very rare that you can, you know, trace uh, this, or, or a set that has made such a profound impact on the game to a single forum post. You know, so, but uh, that's exactly what happened, because people saw, oh, that Suicune was actually kind of annoying, and then once Vince explains it here, then he, everyone goes, oh my god. So to summarize what he's saying, uh, the reason why the Suicune was used is because at this time in Oris, uh, ABR stall team was dominating, and the ABR stall team in question is here on the screen. Uh, Mega Sableye, Choice Band Weavile, Skarmory, Chansey, and Moongus Quagsire. This team had the daylight spammed out of it. 
it was incredibly good, not just because it you know walled everything, but because it was very good at closing the door on the offensive team's window, uh, with which uh, window it had to break through, uh, because Weavile is such a threat. It's not just trapping a wall or stall breakers like Hoopa Unbound when that was allowed, but it's just generally so scary with spikes, uh, then that you are going to wind up pressuring the opponent, and. Uh, yeah, and also benefited from Broken Mega Sableye, which obviously wound up getting banned later, and uh, as Tsung was hoping to try and crit its way through. But yeah, you had uh, you had everything here. And then this game t went on forever. But uh, yeah, as you see here, this stall team is very, very dominant, and it continued to be so. So, Vince fashioned this, st uh, this Suicune set in order to be good against this uh, stall team specifically so uh, it works because you could rest but again you want to uh, well avoid knockoff number one uh, if you can from something like Tangrowth and obviously this Suicune is much less robust against uh, if it gets knocked off you know in the event that it does um, that arrests Suicune which can you know heal up and keep on chugging but the reward is so great, you know, for being more careful around uh, status and knockoff. So rather than resting and shrugging those off, then you become passive. You know, for in when you rest to heal off knockoff, heal off status, then you become passive in exchange, and that makes you easier to deal with. So here you got to be more careful with avoiding them, but sub helps you avoid them, and the reward is much greater because you're an active threat. So you uh, set up all over Chansey because one problem sub Suicune has had ever since Advance is that whether it's Blissey or Chansey, uh, it winds up you know getting worn down by seismic tosses even with pressure pressure because it simply can't create enough of them. And with Protect, you get enough health back to where you are wasting more seismic tosses, number one, but more importantly, you're getting more lefties back. So uh, here, remember how it was protecting in the face of Giga Drain? Well, here you have, you have something, uh, and you completely turn the tables on something like Ferrothorn. Whereas Ferrothorn, yes, it's not the perfect rest to Suicune answer, but it is pretty good. You know, Leech Seed, another thing you want to dodge with Sub, Knock Off, and Power Whip. You know, and then you extend it to Tangrowth and you know grass types in general. Amoongus with a uh, Giga Drain and Clear Smog. And here with Sub and Protect, you fully take advantage of pressure. Pressure was already an irritating tool on Rest Suicune, but on when you're spamming Sub and Protect, it is just you know almost unfair. Uh, so uh, yeah, the window just does not really cooperate with getting the whole thing on screen. So. Less than ideal, but there you go. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you waste slower Pokemon PP and you sub and protect, and then you are eventually super boosted, and then you go crazy with the sub. Simple. And obviously, Scald is the best move you could possibly ask for in this situation. Uh, I, and But the idea has even been transplanted to DPP in advance. Obviously, there is permanent sand there, but people have built teams around removing the permanent sand just so they can make use of this, because even with Surf, then it is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, this is... It, it's simple, it, it seems so obvious in retrospect, but then again, genius always does, so innovation always does. So, uh, people have this habit of looking back at the past, oh, they just innovated the most obvious stuff, it's like, well, it wasn't obvious before. It applies to everything that gets innovated. Anyway, so this set takes off like a rocket, and suddenly this Suicune is everywhere and it gets spammed like crazy. So now we're gonna fast forward a little bit to the spring of 2017, uh, June 13th, you know, almost a year, exactly a year after its debut. And this game was for the semifinals of Smog and Tor. And what was absolutely nuts about it was that uh, Krang, AKA Ben Gay, had been spamming Suicune teams like this nonstop. So everyone knew it was coming. In both Gen 6 and early Gen 7, uh, Suicune was absolutely everywhere. I mean, burn nerf, who cares? Let me tell you, there were a lot of Suicune Tox Effect Stall Wars early on. Uh, the great thing about Suicune is that even if it doesn't wind up sweeping against a bulkier team, then it will still leave a, you know, a lot of destruction in its wake. So, what wound up happening? was that uh, Ben Gay was spamming an absolute ton of Suicune sets, or a ton of Suicune teams, sorry, 
and they were just, people were at their wits end on how to stop them. You know, people were, there were genuinely calls for Suikun's brokenness in Gen 6. I remember Omfugo was a very big proponent of it. It's just so broken, it's cheap, you know, whenever someone was using it in Smoke and Tour, he'd go into their game and say, why are you using this broken nonsense? You know, you're so cheap, and I mean, he was you know, mostly joking, but still. Uh, yeah, so you see that, you see that Seed Bomb Amoongus? This Seed Bomb Amoongus is specifically being used because it can break the Suicune Substitute and then threaten clear smog on it. Absolutely insane. Uh, but this is how desperate people were to handle Suicune because you could have, I mean we mentioned Keldeo's Secret Sword earlier, but it, it almost didn't matter, you know, you could have Keldeo's Secret Sword, you could have you know, whatever physical attack, it's not enough, you know, because with Boosted Scald and, I mean, you get PP stalled if nothing else, you know, Secret Sorting it. Uh, and so we can just set up in front of everything and stall out everything and then cut its way through everything. It was utterly nightmarish. And this is why, you know, you saw so much of it being used and people resorting to all sorts of stuff uh, to counter it. You know, we see the Seed Bomb Amoongus here. This is an extreme example, but uh, Rotom Wash started running, I believe it was 88 special attack EVs to always break the sub uh, with Volt Switch at plus one. So then you could Volt Switch break the sub and then threaten it with uh, Knock Off from Tornado Therian, which, you know, that generally worked. But even then, Suicune's gonna be a threat because it subs and instead of Calm Mining, it just scalds and tries to burn your Rotom and wears it down. You know, and uh, losing bulk on Rotom is not always ideal, you know. That just makes you more vulnerable to Mega Metagross's Zen Headbutt, for example. Yeah, so, uh, this utter da Oh, and uh, the, the crazy thing is, you're thinking, wait, why Seed Bomb, dude? You know, you're just gonna get burned by Scald and then you're ruined. Yeah, and then it pulls out Rest. So, Rest Seed Bomb Amoongus. Uh, is I'm not saying this is you know a good set or anything, but this is how desperate people were to take Suicune down. And the crazy thing is that it doesn't even wind up working. Pretty much everything people were trying to throw at Suicune was just failing because you subprotect your way through everything. I mean, you throw water immunities at it. It's like oh, I'll use Seismitoad or whatever, and it winds up pressure stalling you. I mean, that's a classic. That goes back to uh, Krokoon stalling out Vaporeon and DPP. Uh, because of pressure. It's, yeah, there's just pretty much nothing uh, that you can't stop. So, obviously, you know, Scald Burn at plus six is making it even more nightmarish to deal with. But uh, if there is one flaw Suicune has, it's that it doesn't have that many Scalds. As uh, you see here, the riveting, uh, well, it is riveting, I think, to see, you know, the skill come out. But I get that it's not exciting to see someone spam Call Mine at plus six just to get more lefties. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, so there's the Seed Bomb, here comes, uh, just trying to regenerate, trying to not run out of Seed Bomb. Oh, he's already out of him. Good lord. So now he's just trying to burn through uh, Scalds. You know, and it doesn't happen, but that brings us to our next development. Anyway, so, uh, what forced out the Suicune eventually? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Ben just switched it out, and now it has to set up all over again. But that's the thing, it is going to set up all over again. It has a million opportunities, and uh, what winds up happening is that... Yeah, Suicune winds up winning the game. Oh, it gets the burn there, but it was going to win anyway, barring a crit, so... Yeah, so, uh, the next development, this is a variation on the, Vin, uh, the Vince Suicune. And it's not really a huge one, because this one hasn't really taken off. It's used sometimes, especially in advance, but uh, what's notable about this is that you see that Suicune uh, set, switch into Toxic, or uh, switch into, just let itself get Toxic. It's like, oh dude, why didn't you sub? Uh, now you're ruined, right? And then it subs, and then it rests. And this was uh, a set created by Obliviate, and it was called Flocoon because his name was Flo, I think short for Florian. He was from Germany. Anyway. So yeah, this sub-rest Suicune, you know, instead of protect, you have rest. So now you have the flexibility of not getting ruined by a stray toxic or, you know, lava plume burner or whatever, but you still get the benefit of substitute to pressure stall things. And, uh, yeah, but it's, you know, protect is just such an incredible move because sub and rest, they're still being used, you know, in service of a sweep largely. And if rest is being used in service of Suicune's own health, you know, just for taking things on, it becomes passive. 
whereas protect is you know pretty much an offensive weapon you know at all times so but yeah i mean you see the benefit here that this week could actually got knocked off you know lost its leftovers from you know uh switching into the aloma mola i didn't even notice that earlier and it's still trucking it's still uh incredibly incredibly dangerous so yeah uh it doesn't wind up winning because axel 10 plays an amazing game but yeah this is a variation on the vincoon and the vincoon is still the scariest uh, it is a standard. I just wanted to mention this uh, variation. So, yeah. Now, uh, we mentioned Gen 7. And what's crazy is before you see, oh, th these balanced teams, right? Look at, uh, this is a, you know, bulky, you know, Clef, Pharaoh. Uh, here you've got uh, Ben Gay with, you know, the very bulky setup. You know, with the now banned Doug Trio. You know, and uh, even Vince's original team, you know, it's, you know, very... It's not lacking in offense, I'm not saying that, but it's still very balanced. It tries to switch around. Now here, the team Relus is using, which was built by ABR, uh, this is straight up hyper offense. Now the idea of using Lunar Dance Cresselia alongside this Suicune set uh, was actually, I believe, also an invention of Ben Gaze. And you think, oh, well, Healing Wish, cool. So even if Suicune gets back up uh, or goes down to one HP, you can revive it and then you have another chance. Yes, but there's a reason it's Cresselia using Lunar Dance and not just Healing Wish. Also, this replay isn't even that important because um, it's not about what Suicune does in it. This was just another debut. You know, this was uh, March 21st, 2021. But I'm mentioning it not just because it was a debut, but because this team and this style has be also become insanely ripped off. It has become the new norm for uh, Suicune. In Gen 6 and 7, I mean, in Gen 6, you just, you know, obviously you don't run Magirno, but the teams are nearly identical. You get a Mega in there, you get your uh, Rocker, you know, maybe the Rocker can be the Mega if you want it to be Metagross, but otherwise you run, like, Sash Drill, Imprisoned Lando, whatever you want. You know, and then another, like, Zardex, uh, you throw in your Volcarona, your Superior, a uh, Superior also being a beneficiary of Lunar Dance, of course, and you're thinking, okay, well, why Lunar Dance instead of Healing Wish? And the answer is that Lunar Dance also restores PP. So we mentioned the problem that sometimes Suicune runs out of Scalds. Well, sometimes it also runs out of subs and protects. Because yes, you can spam it and stall everything else out, but in, you're also running out of uh, sub and protect because you only have 16 of each. And yes, 32 turns is a lot. Uh, it's a ton, especially against frailer teams. But against uh, bulkier teams that can go the distance, then yeah, you run out of those and then you're, you're in trouble. So... Uh, with Lunar Dance, you get, instead of 32, you get 64 in effect. And that is devastating. You know, and, uh, oh, and obviously you, when you Lunar Dance, you bring back Scald as well. So even if you, you know, it's very rare that a team is going to be able to withstand, you know, a bunch of plus six Scalds, you know, 24 times, and then another 24 after that. You know, so as long as you're playing decently with it. Obviously Superior also benefits because if you run out of Leaf Storms, you can Lunar Dance to that as well. But, uh, yeah, it's not always about restoring the PP. Obviously, sometimes you just want to bring Suicune or whatever back up to full health. I mean, Volcarona's not really worrying about having uh, running out of PP. But the effect, it is still very much there, in effect. So, yeah, here's a great double switch by Rulus to get Suicune in on Chansey. And now it's, uh, it's off to the races. Whether this Rotom can break the sub or not, you know, you're just going to sub and protect. And, I mean, you don't even necessarily have to commit to the Call Mine. You can just... Uh, you, I mean, you can, but you can also just go for the Scald Burn, and there's the Volt Switch, and it does break. But now, you know, you go to Weavile and threaten the knockoff, and, you know, Suicune protects. So, in effect, it lost very, very little, you know. So, and then uh, Superior Rocky Helmet traps it. Great move by Realist. So, you know, even when the Suicune itself is not really doing that much, you are... I mean, like, even if this Volcarona goes down to this uh, Hydro Vortex from Rotom, it... You know, almost doesn't matter because Suicune dominates Chansey, it's going to beat Mawile, and, you know, Rotom has to Volt Switch out. So, yeah, it's getting, uh, getting ruined. So, yeah, this uh, hyper-offense Suicune style has become the norm. And again, I want to bring it back to Ben Gay because I believe also around 2017-ish, uh, he was, maybe a little later, but he was running, I think it was a Trick Scarf Cresselia, but again, it was his idea. Uh, to Lunar Dance with the Suicune because you know he was spamming Suicune more than anyone else so he was really pushing the strategy forward and he was like you know what I'm going to just Lunar Dance with this thing because you know, Cress I mean yeah if even if the Cress doesn't do much by itself it's worth it because I get to run two of these Suicunes which is just absolutely insane so 
uh, big credits to everyone mentioned, especially to Vince, who has, you know, created the defining Suicune set, arguably, for the modern age. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.